So let's take a sneak peek at the Small Business Server 2011 Essentials Office Integration Module, which we expect in the fall timeframe. Now the Office Integration Module does two things. It allows a simpler way to create users locally and have them automatically provisioned in Office 365 for you, and also to seamlessly create a partnered domain name between Essentials and Office 365. Now the good thing about here is you can use one domain name such as cohovineyard.com um, to access remote web access and use the same domain name to access your external SharePoint and utilize as your email alias as well. So let's walk through installing the Office Integration Module and some of the administration that you can do with it. On your SPS Essentials dashboard, you have this link today, the Getting Started with Microsoft Office 365, and clicking on that will take you to some online help where we have further information about Office 365, and this will be the primary point when we release um, information in the future about this integration. So I'm just going to click on this, and it will walk you through the installation process for the Office Integration Module. Now the first thing we need is a subscription. If I already have a subscription, I can definitely skip past this. However, I can actually go out and subscribe and pay for that subscription, or I can have an evaluation, and we work with both uh, models. The good thing about the Office 365 integration module it will also work for the P plans and the E plans as well, or Office 365 for small business and Office 365 for enterprise. So once we have our Office 365 subscription, I then come back and enter in the administrator username and password and sign in. And what that will do is now configure that connection between my local server and the Office 365 server. You can now see that my server has been configured for use with the Office 365 connector, and I have some um, getting started tasks which I can do, such as creating accounts and linking those accounts or configuring a professional domain name. Instantly, what we also see is now we have an Office 365 tab where I can have uh, quick views of the health of my Office 365 environment, such as which users are utilizing the data, how much data I have yet left. Now, this, of course, is a prototype, um, so the final experience may change, but it gives you some example of some of the experiences that we can provide within the dashboard of SPS Essentials when utilizing um, the Office 365 connector. You'll also see I've got a number of administration tasks. I can do Exchange, SharePoint, and subscription-based administration um, in Office 365, but also I can add professional domain names or uninstall or disable the Office 365 integration as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to launch through a domain name configuration. And this will be a very quick demo because of what I've done is I've already configured a, a um, a domain name, uh, cohovineyard.com, for my remote web access. So I can actually utilize that same process for Office 365. So what it's doing now is, is it's checking that domain name is configured, um, that remote web access is integrated in that domain name, and that domain name is up and, up and working. And what it will do is it will take all that information from my SPS Essential server and configure that with Office 365. Um, allowing um, the MX records and any other records that it requires changing in the DNS space to be able to be configured um, automatically. So now that's done, I can um, go in and create my users and utilize things like at cohovineyard.com as their email addresses. So let's actually move to our users tab, and you can see this is the common users tab that you'll see in SPS Essentials today. We have a new extension here which says we can add users to Office 365. So clicking on this actually will take my users list and say I can automatically provision any new users um, from a bulk standpoint into the Office 365 tool. It's taking their aliases and putting on that provision domain name that we showed us, uh, saw a small demo of before. Um, any users that are um, provisioned there currently that match the, match the aliases that we have on the server aren't being shown here, or any inactive users that I may have as well. So I'm just going to go and add those users into Office 365. And further to this, we can then extend the user administration. So for example, I can add a new user account. In this case, let's add a new user called Jeff Price. And this is the standard user administration tool that we saw before. Um, with you know, access to my shared folders, but then we add a new screen where I can activate this user for Office 365. So I can create a brand new user um, in Office 365, 
and provision that with the default settings within that tool. Now you saw before I can go up to the Office 365 administration tool and fill in further metadata such as their um, office phone number, addresses and further information within that web tool. But also here I can um, select not to activate this user in Office 365 or I can actually uh, assign an existing Office 365 account to this user itself. So this is a great way if I have two different aliases, if I've got a set of users already in Office 365, if I had to have different alias for that user locally, um, this tool can align those. And then you also you can see um, we then continue on and finalize with our standard remote web access for this, for this user account. So now I've um, provisioned automatically Jeff locally and then also within Office 365 and I have further information that's being returned here such as this temporary password. Some other things that we also do with the Office 365 integration kit is integrate into the account properties. So you can see I have a new tab in my uh, account properties and here I can activate uh, this user if it's not if this user hasn't been activated before or I can also deactivate this user as well so um, if this user has left the company um, or uh, I want this user is not utilizing the Office 365 technology for their day-to-day -day act activities I can easily deactivate them through the tool and be able to um, do that centrally in my SPS dashboard. So you can see the Office 365 integration kit does provide a simpler way to create a user locally and have them automatically provisioned in the cloud and utilize the same domain functionality um, that we provide in SPS Essentials for purchase domain names and extend that into the Office 365 environment. But as if we sort of reverse back to the original demonstration, those things you can do today manually. You can easily create those users locally and then provision those users manually in the cloud, create your domain names locally on SPS Essentials and do the same configuration in the cloud with very little overhead. So there's no need to wait for the Office integration module if you want to see the value of SPS Essentials and Office 365 working together today. The great thing about it, in the fall time frame when we release the Office integration module to you, then you'll be able to just glue these together and ease some of that, um, that simple administration into an automated fashion. So thank you very much. Um, Feel free to use our forums to ask as many questions as you want and hopefully we'll be talking to you soon. Thank you.